and JC Direct this week, Nikkei Highs, Pick and Pay Lows, also City Lodge, Bitcoin and Warren Buffett's annual letter. Hello and welcome to JC Direct, episode 576 for 29 February. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by Just One Lap. So let's kick off with that uh, story around the Nikkei 225. Actually, before we kick off about that, I completely buried the lead. Tonight, 29 Feb, if you're listening to it on Thursday, we have our first Power Hour of the Year. We have secured a sponsor. We'll make announcements at the sponsorship at the event. It is 5.30. It is webcast, justonelap.com slash events for more information and bookings. So now let us get ourselves to that Nikkei 225, which I have been waiting, I want to say, almost ever in a day for it to finally get to a new all-time high. Uh, it peaked in December of 1989. It had a 80-odd percent drawdown to late 2008. Was that the correct date? Yep. Well, actually, early March 2009, an 80 two percent drawdown it has now rallied significantly off those lows uh, what are we almost uh, six seven times higher and it finally last thursday made a new all-time high 35 years ago now d- let's go dig into this a bit but also let's understand the nikkei 225 in of itself it is kind of like the top 40 225 biggest stocks on the, 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 the Japanese exchange. There's also the topics, which is kind of like the all share, and they sort of move in sync, but Nikkei 225 is a much better representation. Uh, it is stocks such as Mitsubishi, it's Sony, it's all those, are they old school tech? I mean, in some ways they are, right? They, they Sony, not Apple, they're Mitsubishi, not Tesla. But finally they are there, and finally it is, it is starting to happen. I mean, what went wrong in the 80s? Well, a lot went wrong in the 80s. Most notably, what was happening in Japan was they were trying to protect the yen. They were worried about a weakening currency that would make their exports less competitive. We saw the general market crash in 87, and they were not changing rates. They were like, nope, nope, we're going to keep rates really, really low. We're trying to protect the yen. And, and basically all that free money. This is quantitative easing before quantitative easing. Very, very low rates. And what we saw, which is what we saw in the U.S. markets post, well, the last decade, right? Massive run-up. What was that being fueled by? Well, it's been fueled by all the usual sort of things, which is, for example, uh, low rates. What do you do? You go and speculate. You don't put money in the bank. You go buy a property. You go buy ETFs. Okay, there weren't ETFs, so you went and bought stocks back then. And that's what fueled that bubble. And then it collapsed. And it, 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 you know, we had ag- abonomics. We had deflation for a decade. They had some inflation out earlier in the week, 2.2% for January, year on year. I mean, they've finally seen some inflation come through. They've got a problem with their population, massively aging. Their skew is the pyramid's that way. Not enough young, too many old. South Africa, the skew's that way. Lots of young, not too many old. And that creates all sorts of complexities for the future of, of the Japanese economy. We've seen, as I said, economics trying to get it to work. But we finally have a new high in the Nikkei 225. And then the question comes... Well, you want a slice of that action. Uh, there, there are a couple of ways you can do it. The one is the Signia uh, JP, SYG JP is the code. And this is a JC traded, and its job is quite simple. It tracks the share price of the uh, 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 Nikkei 225. You do have currency risk involved at the same time. Make no mistake about that. But we can see that also trading up at all-time highs. But then Investec is also doing a structured product, and they've done a lot of these over the last 20 years. I had an interview with Brian McMillan on MoneyWeb recently. You can probably go and find it. Just go to MoneyWeb uh, and look for Investec, look for structured product. And what they got there is it is going to happen in uh, April will be the, 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 the date it starts, a U.S. dollar or a Zal one. But what's important is a couple of points. Firstly, it's focusing on the index value only. No dividends, no exchange rates. Say on day one the index is 40,000 points, that'll be the reference point. You've got a five-year term, 
there is a guarantee that if it is at the end of five years, less than 30% down, you'll get your money back. If it's more than 30% down, you lose out and you'll take whatever the loss is. Digital return, what they do with these is they enhance the return. If in year one, the Nikkei 225 is green, you will get paid 17% return on your investment. Regardless whether it is green by one point or a thousand percent, you will get 17%. If on year one it isn't green, it's red, nothing happens. We go to year two. If it's green in year two then, you will get paid again, it'll expire and you will get paid out. And you will get paid 17% times two because you're in the second year. So you get 34%. Again, whether the index is up 1% or 1,000%, you will get 34. And so it rolls. If in the first, first four years it's red every single year, and then it's green in year five, you get five times 17. And, and what you get is that payout. The interesting products. Check with your stockbroker or, or your advisor if you're interested in it. I like these structured products. I've never personally held them. I've held them for my sister at a couple of points in time, and certainly they've all done on the sticker. Uh, and Brian was showing some interesting data. Never one has had their structured products in the 20 years. Those that have expired so far lost any money because they've got those capital protection. In this case, if at the end of five years it is more than 30% down, you take the hit. But if it's less than 30% down, well, quite simply, you take the payment. You can get a US dollar version, and there is a Tsar version as well. Uh, what also happened this weekend was uh, Warren Buffett's uh, letter to shareholders was published. It's 14 pages, not heavy reading, well worth it. You'll find it on the BerkshireHathaway.com website. It is a website from usernet bulletin boards it is so old school it's weird but it works the letter is there the uh, agm is scheduled for the 4th of may it will probably be screened but we don't yet have any details about that so we need to wait to see what's going to happen in that regard will it be screened won't it be screened etc I, I suspect it will yahoo's been doing it the last couple of months sorry last couple of years i see no reason why they won't do it again there's huge interest and it, it, it is a long day I think there's four hours and then a break and then another four hours it is a long day but it is uh, it's worth the time I absolutely think it's worth the time so let's go to some local numbers and let's start with City Lodge City Lodge had results out and they weren't bad but they're not getting margin coming through revenue 20% higher dividend up 20% higher but HEP's only 10% higher. Occupancy's up at 61%. That's moving in the right direction. At about 65%, they start getting pricing power on their hotel rooms. And of course, it's the leverage effect. That move from 61 to 65, 4% you know, increase in bed nights and therefore revenue, but your costs don't rise by that amount at all. Your, your costs hardly increase. I think where they're hurting on margins is A, perhaps discounting on the bed nights, but B, they've moved big into food and beverage. And as I said, you know, if you increase your number of bed nights, your costs hardly change. But if you increase the number of people through your kitchen, yes, there's some efficiencies that you get, but that person ordered a steak. You've got the cost of the steak, the cost of the cost of a cup of coffee. So I think that's where perhaps they're struggling. We've seen this pretty much across the board. Let me move to this chart here. We've got uh, City Lodge been going sideways pretty much since mid-2021. If we look up Sun International, I had held both. I have sold both a long time ago. Sun International, more or less trading in a range since uh, March of last year. Uh, Southern Sun doing a little bit better, but not a heck of a lot better. I think the leisure trade which absolutely was there. I entered when Omicron got announced in November 2021. I think what we're seeing with that trade is that now all of a sudden it's kind of got mature, mature rather than stale. It's become a mature trade in many senses. And what I mean by that is that all the upsides in, occupancies are kind of back at pre-pandemic levels. Yes, debt levels are lower. Yes, operationally they are better companies. But where is it coming from? I mean, yes, we're seeing international tourists, but, man, South Africans aren't out there traveling. We, we ain't got the money for that. So, yeah, it, it certainly, I think the, the, I've taken my profits, and I'm not convinced there's that much still exciting to be happening in that particular place. While we're here, let's have a quick look at multi-choice. Remember, Canal Plus offer 105 bucks. The board said no dice. 
But MultiChoice also announced that they had acquired, sorry, Canal Plus announced that they had complied with, got to 35.1% of shares, and uh, they, that then is mandatory offer. You've got to make an offer to the rest of the minorities. The multi-choice board said, oh, we're going to speak to the takeover regulation panel, and uh, takeover regulation panel ruled on Tuesday, and I quote, uh, to the effect that Canal Plus has acquired 35.01% of the voting rights in multi-choice, and accordingly, a mandatory offer in terms of Section 123 of the Act has been triggered. Canal Plus is therefore required to make the mandatory offer immediately in terms of the regulations. What price does that offer have to be? The highest price paid for the shares in the previous six months. That's probably mid-90s. But surely they come at 105. I think they're going to sweeten the deal. I think they'll come back at 120, maybe 130 or so. But there's an interesting line in this sense here. 35.01% of the voting rights in multi-choice. Remember I spoke two weeks ago about the regulations that say that they can't vote more than 20%. But the, the takeover regulation, they are voting shares, but they can't vote them. At this, as I record this Wednesday afternoon, just under 105 bucks for the multi-choice share price. So, I mean, things moving in the right direction, but uh, it, it's sitting at that 105. It's been up to around about 109 a couple of weeks ago. I can't see them just coming at 105. They're going to want to get the board on their side. Hostile is no fun for anybody. Get the board on their side. I imagine there are talks are happening right now, uh, and we will see an offer. As I said, from 105 up to 120, why not? Hey, the euro's weakened, or the rand's weakened against the euro. It makes it uh, cheaper already. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is trading as I do this at $59,884. It moves around so fast. Uh, that is just off the all-time highs from late 21 and uh, so yeah, uh, early 2021, late 2021 with a collapse in the middle down to around 30 odd thousand in the price. We've got a Bitcoin halving happening April. And what Bitcoin halving does, so miners, they, they, they do the computational, they uh, update the blockchain, and for all of their effort, they get paid some Bitcoin. In April, the number of Bitcoin halves. Boom, suddenly you're getting half the amount. So kind of when the halvings happen, you need to see the price correspond. Now, as I understand, current mining costs are around the sixteen to 18000 So let's say they jump to 30000 35000 If we go below that price... I mean, then there's a risk of a plus 50% attack, attack on Bitcoin simply because the miners are, well, not worth my while. Look, they're always cheap miners. They're expensive miners. I get that. Is Bitcoin going to make new highs? Why not? I, what is stopping Bitcoin making a new high? Uh, and let's call it up. Let's see if I can get the, the ZAR version. Because as I say, in ZAR, yep, Bitcoin in ZAR from, is trading. So Bitcoin in ZAR is not at an all-time high, but it is over a million, <clears throat> quite chunkily over a million, 1.162 million rand per coin. Let's be clear. I don't believe that Bitcoin is the future of money. I think it is interesting technology. It's a great proof of concept. Bitcoin is not the future of much. Its market cap is about 1.2 trillion. There are hundreds of exchanges and well, dozens of ETFs just for Bitcoin, and yet it's only a trillion and some change. Apple's three trillion, Microsoft three trillion, and they're both just on one stock exchange. Now, they are included in thousands of ETFs, but not dedicated ETFs. We've got, what was it, 11, 11 ETFs that listed was it earlier this month uh, in the U.S. on Bitcoin. It's weird that that disconnect, in a sense, between what is the 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 utility for bitcoin at the moment what is bitcoin it's a risk asset when the market goes risk on bitcoin runs yes the halving is helping in the same time and we certainly are seeing that we've got a, a, a an article on the on the website just one lap.com slash etfs we're looking at last week we looked at global etfs this week we looked at local etfs uh, what's available three local three global uh, which do i hold but interestingly a great conversation i had wednesday morning with uh, daniel king from merchant west investments 
talking about the local REITs. He's not so convinced they're perhaps as cheap as we all think. It's worth a listen. I've embedded the story. Just one lap.com slash ETFs. You will find it there. And then what's the other thing I want to talk about? Pick and pay. So uh, was it uh, 10 days or two weeks ago? I started building a position in pick and pay uh, and all was looking pretty. It did a break higher. I made the point at the time that I thought there might be a rights issue, but at most the rights issue would be yeah, four billion at absolutely the upside. Well, the rights issue came. It was four billion. The debt has doubled to over seven billion. Uh, sales of pick and pay are going backwards. I mean, to, you know, comparable store sales were what zero point two percent higher. Throw inflation into that, they're going backwards five, six, seven percent. They're going to list Boxer to raise some capital. Boxer is the crown jewels. It's the one that's growing in the double digits as opposed to the pick and pay brands. So the market absolutely hated. Uh, what have we got here? Let me go and pull up the chart because I've been watching this chart. It was looking, as I say, quite pretty. Let's zoom in a whole bit. Looking a whole lot pretty, but not so much anymore. We had a really nice break higher. That break above the 26 level was significant. It was important. It looked like we were going to go for the gap, which is at 29.60 or there's about 29.70. And it hasn't happened. The market hated the update. And as we are trading today, pick and pay is looking just uglier. So we're now down at 20.57, off another 6.1% this morning. And now we are getting bitly close to the point at which I'm going to be like, yo, guys, I don't know if I want to play this game anymore. I'm looking at a weekly chart here. Uh, weekly close below 2022 is my I'm out. As I said, I expected a nasty update. I thought there might be a rights issue. This exceeded my expectations by a long way. And let's be clear, it exceeded expectations to the downside, not to the upside. That is, it's the last thing you want to see. It happens sometimes. It's one of those things. I didn't put it to my crystal challenge, uh, fortunately, because... I just wasn't sure. And, and, and the one in the Crystal Challenge, which I'm currently not holding. So what I have in Crystal Challenge, Colgrey M3, uh, Mr. Price, Anglo Gold Ashanti, Richmond, and then Zeta. Zeta, the, the, the car company, not the agri stock. Man, and it's just going down. It's 1150. It's just under pressure. Is that, again, the mature story that we've seen in the investment, in, 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 the, in the leisure world? Does elections help? You know, I mean, the big wigs of the political party stay at fancy hotels, but do the sort of the, the, the volunteers get to maybe seven of you get stuck in an atos that you've rented from Avis, uh, stuck in a city lodge? Maybe not, because I imagine the volunteers are in area. So the big wigs stay fancy and they get the beamers and all of that. And everybody else, well, you get the, the less exciting type of stuff. Folks, we're going to park it there. Uh, a couple of points. Just remember, we are now putting these uh, podcasts on YouTube as well. You'll find them on the Just One Lap channel there. No change to the audio. It's still coming. But YouTube, because I'm looking at charts as I'm doing it, so you can get a look at the charts. You can also watch live if you want. Uh, go to the uh, justonelap.com slash JSE Direct. Click on the latest one for the show notes. You'll find a link to sign up to a newsletter. We'll stick it live as we go live. Uh, remember, 29th of Feb, which is probably tonight as you're listening to it, we have a webcast. Uh, everything tax-free, everything uh, ETFs, 5.30. Don't miss it. And as always, look after yourself. If you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers all.